The Mocha Pot by Bialetti. I do love this thing. It's inexpensive, it's simple, and it can brew excellent coffee if you summon the right voodoo. Unfortunately, even experienced users tend to fail. Like a lot of things Italian, the mocha pot is beautiful and temperamental. I'm going to show you how to tame it. Oh my god. It's like a miracle. The mocha pot has a few features in common with an espresso machine. Steam pushes hot water through a chamber containing a bed of ground coffee. As with espresso, the ground coffee has to present the right amount of flow resistance so that it forms a semi-solid puck that will allow thorough extraction without disintegrating. However, unlike espresso, we need a gradual, gentle flow of water. Espresso is a sudden and violent process. Mocha pot coffee is not. In a mocha pot, the bed of coffee, or puck, is far less compressed. The water pressure is a lot lower, and the contact time between water and coffee lasts a good deal longer. It is a challenge to keep the puck intact throughout the entire brew. A moment ago, we watched four examples of channeling, that is, of water rushing through tunnels it eroded in the puck. Once that happens, a watery brew will flood the upper chamber and make the coffee weak. This is a completely avoidable defect. Mocha pot coffee can be very concentrated. If you do it my way, it will be about two-thirds as strong as espresso. For that degree of concentration, the water has to saturate every particle and the puck has to remain intact through the entire process. During the brew, two opposing forces will be acting together. The dry coffee will begin absorbing hot water and expanding, which tightens and strengthens the puck. Meanwhile, that same hot water will begin dissolving soluble solids and undermining it. I'm going to show you how to prevent the puck from disintegrating during the brew. Getting it right isn't complicated, but it does require practice. Like a lot of simple things, it's difficult. The three steps that you've got to master are, first, getting the right grind, second, prepping the funnel correctly, and third, managing the flow of heat energy during the brew. A simple blade grinder can be made to work because the contact time between the hot water and the dry coffee is two to three minutes, which is long enough for thorough extraction. With espresso, the contact time is only 20 to 30 seconds, so the grind has to be precise and consistent. The mocha pot is far more tolerant of imperfect grinding. Adjusting your overall grit size is a simple matter of changing the grinding time. To ensure that the various particles are distributed evenly, I shake the grinder as I go, which I'm sure will shorten its life, but at these prices I really don't mind. It's not a bad idea to stir the ground coffee before you start packing the funnel. For each gram of dry coffee that I use, I want 3 milliliters of brewed coffee in the upper chamber for a brewing ratio of 1 to 3. The right dose of coffee is whatever amount fills the funnel properly. Different coffees have different densities, so the weight is variable. Regardless of the coffee's weight, you will always use the same volume. Here's the ritual. Fill the funnel a bit more than half, then tap it sideways to level it somewhat. Tap it vertically to settle the coffee. Fill it further and shake and tap again. Finally, overfill the funnel slightly and level it without pressing. Then tap it vertically one last time to leave a bit of headspace. Filling a mocha pot funnel is a bit like filling a porta filter. The technique never changes. You either get it right or you don't. Never tamp the coffee, not even lightly. Use gravity alone to settle it. If the puck is compressed, channeling is guaranteed. The coffee offers so much flow resistance that the water can only find a weak spot and break through. 
Fill the boiler with water to the bottom of the relief valve and bring it to the boil. Remove it from the heat, drop the funnel in, and screw on the upper chamber. Now, put it back on the burner until the coffee appears. As soon as it becomes visible, move the pot to a cool surface and switch the burner off if you have an electric range. If you use gas, turn the flame to minimum. We're going to mimic the pre-infusion period for espresso. Let the coffee climb into the upper chamber very slowly without adding any heat unless it stalls, and in that case, add only a little. We're letting the coffee particles absorb water and expand to fill the headspace above the funnel. This helps the puck to resist erosion. This period should last between 30 and 60 seconds. Once the pre-infusion is done, move the pot back onto the heat, but only for one to three seconds. Add only a little bit of energy to the system. The flow rate will respond to mild inputs, so take it easy here. You can move the pot to a cool surface nearby if things get too lively, or place it back on the heat source, or just hover over it when things are going too slowly. This is the main part of the brew. The rate of flow should be faster than it was during the pre-infusion, but it must remain gentle and steady. It should continue like this through the entire time. There is a sweet spot. Pre-infusion should take 30 to 60 seconds. The main brewing period should last from 90 seconds to 2 minutes. The entire brew should last a total of 2 to 3 minutes. This has been brewing gently with no sign of channeling. Now that the coffee is near the level I want, I'll cool the boiler with water. With the mocha pot, the water temperature is fixed. It's within a degree or two of boiling, which sounds like it would ruin the coffee immediately, but the ratio of hot water to dry coffee prevents disaster. The puck temperature won't approach boiling so long as you brew correctly. If you use a tight brew ratio of 1 to 3 and aim for a total brewing time of 2 to 3 minutes, you needn't worry about overheating the coffee. While you're learning to master the mocha pot, you should evaluate the spent puck from time to time. Let's look at the puck from the brew that I just performed. The shape is good. It appears intact and it resists light pressure. Now let's check for dry areas. As you can see, the coffee is wet throughout, so this is perfect. This is exactly what you want to find. Well, that's all for today. In my next Mocha Pot video, I'll address a number of common mistakes and problems. I'm also going to show you how to refine your brewing to suit different types of coffee, various milk drinks, and most importantly, your own taste. So stay in touch. Cheers.